On the menu for this Thanksgiving edition of Titans All Access, the Titans are thankful to return home this weekend as they face the Carolina Panthers. Coach Dave McGinnis is here to get you ready. Plus, giving back to others is not something DeAndre Hopkins reserves for the holidays. One of the league's best wideouts talks about his work at helping others out on the football field. And Livingston Soda Fountain and Grill in Brownsville is the next stop on Mike Keith's Follow Me through Tennessee tour. We're serving that up and plenty more as Titans All Access starts now. But there he is, the Yuli Bulldozer, Derrick Henry. Got Chris Moore. Can he catch it? What a catch! Will Levis, Levis to Hopkins. Big Jeff fires up the intercept of Bonnie Hooker. There's Hopkins making the catch. We hope you're having a great Thanksgiving weekend. From the BetMGM studio, I'm Mike Keith, and this is Titans All Access. This week, we celebrate our youth as we highlight two very special initiatives. The Tennessee Titans partnered with the TSSAA starting in 2007 to sponsor the Mr. Football Awards, which are presented to the state's top football players across nine classifications, plus the state's top kicker. Throughout this week's episode, we'll unveil to you the finalists for the 2023 Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Awards. The winners will be announced during a luncheon at Nissan Stadium on Tuesday, December 5th. Josh Corey, Senior Director of Marketing and Social Responsibility for the Titans, has played a huge role in the cultivation of the relationship between the Titans and youth sports across the state of Tennessee. He helped to establish the Tennessee Girls Flag Football League in 2021, which is now offered in 32 high schools across Tennessee, including Metro Nashville Public Schools, Williamson County Schools, and Clarksville Montgomery County Schools. This summer, I invited Josh Corey to join me as a part of our Follow Me Through Tennessee series. I took him to Livingston Soda Fountain and Grill in Brownsville, and we'll share that with you later. But first, the almost two and a half hour car ride gave Josh and I the chance to talk about the importance of girls flag football for not only him and the entire organization, but for everybody involved. That conversation is featured in this week's Listen Up with Duncan. Let's talk about I know that's one of your proudest achievements, one of the club's proudest achievements. Everybody around is fired up about this. How did Girls Flag come on your radar? How did it get started in Williamson County as that sort of trial balloon? Really wanted to do it from from the jump when I when I when I moved up to Tennessee uh, because it was so successful in Florida. Georgia had uh, kind of already got their program going uh, in, in that state through through the Falcons. The Falcons were were big time in helping helping get that started. And uh, I knew that we could do that here. You had to find the right timing. Right timing was everything. Uh, you had to have. Uh, you know the support and the resources, which you know our uh, our, our leadership group and our ownership group have been fantastic. They've been all in since day one. As soon as we made the ask, and then you had to you had to find the right the right place for it. And uh, certainly, you want to have it all throughout the state, but but you got to have that initial cornerstone, which which we thought was Williamson County because of the buy-in from the school district administration, the, the coaches that were already on staff there, the people that were in the building, and uh, you know that's why we started it there, and have uh, been expanding ever since. So I went the first Sunday to Franklin High School and I watched two games, but when I got out there, I could not believe the quality of play, and I even talked to a couple of the head coaches, and they too were surprised because of how it was set up. Girls from other sports, because it was just being played on the weekends, girls from other sports could come try it. Yeah. And I, I mean, the quality of the play was fantastic. Yeah. 
I was so impressed with the athleticism. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you could just kind of see week by week, these girls started gelling together. Um, you could see the improvement literally from Sunday to Sunday. Later on in this edition of Titans All Access, Josh Corey and I check out Livingston Soda Fountain and Grill in Brownsville. Spoiler alert, it was delicious. But up next, a Titans All Access first. DeAndre Hopkins is one of the NFL's best wide receivers, and he is this week's Nissan Insider. Stay tuned. Congratulations to the 2023 Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Awards finalists for Division I, Classes 1A, 2A, and 3A. Congratulations to the 2023 Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Awards finalists for Division I, Classes 4A, 5A, and 6A. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio and Titans All Access. Time now for our Nissan Insider, our first chance to sit down with wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins, who is having a very, very good year for the Tennessee Titans in 2023. We're not really surprised because for the 10 years prior to this, he often tortured the Titans for the Houston Texans and Arizona Cardinals. So when Rand Carthon signed him, Titans fans rejoiced. There's a lot that we didn't know about DeAndre Hopkins before he arrived here, and a lot of things in his football career now make more sense. We'll show you in this week's Nissan Insider. The thing that we didn't know until you got here is about your incredible preparation. And if you watch in practice, the attention to detail on the route running, the communication with the teammates, even the core work you're doing while the first team defense is on, you are, you are nonstop. 10 years ago, you didn't know to do that coming out of Clemson. Nobody 21 years old knows to do that. How did you learn to be that kind of pro, like what we used to see out of Eddie George years ago? I appreciate it. Obviously, the young me didn't know any of, uh, any of those tactics. Uh, I felt like my skill could, you know, keep me in this thing long as I long as I wanted to play. Obviously, you know, skill takes you so far. But I would say I picked that up from guys around me like JJ Watt and Andre Johnson, being in Houston and seeing the way they practice and seeing things they did when nobody was watching. Uh, to me, I knew I I wanted to be where those guys those guys were one day, and I felt like that was the standard. JJ used to do. Uh, cardio during practice, or he would he would run sprints during practice uh, while the first team uh, offense was out there, and it's just something that I picked up, and uh, I would say just watching the greats around me uh, and, and never feeling like I know it all or I'm I'm where I want to be. Uh, year 11, and I'm still doing those same things that I did a couple years ago. Titans in the King Cat, Henry hand Spears pitches Levis looking deep for Hopkins. The living legend is there. Touchdown, <laughs> Titans! How proud does it make you that the young guys are now following you around doing a lot of the same things at practice? Uh, it, it makes me feel good because I learned there from someone who is going to be a future Hall of Famer. Uh, and, and hopefully, you know, that's something that they feel like will help their game. Uh, and, and, you know, sometimes it's not something where it just overnight is going to take effect, but over over time, it's something that, you know, you pick up that mentality and you want to do something when you feel like nobody else is. What makes DeAndre Hopkins' game as a wide receiver unique? I will say my knowledge of, of football, my knowledge of defenses, uh, being able to get open, not necessarily being a 4-3, 4-4 guy, uh, but just my knowledge of, of defenses and uh, I would say being able to, to catch contested balls. Uh, I feel like that's something that separates me, uh, just my focus and when the ball's in the air, that's a 50-50 ball, I feel like it's mine. Throws deep downfield, there's Hopkins all alone. 20, 15, 10, five, in zone. Ladies and gentlemen, give him 61 yards! Touchdown, Titans! It feels like in, in watching you on and off the field, you like the puzzle of the details of the game. Is that one of the parts of football that you really enjoy the most? Oh, uh, it is. Uh, I think uh, part of it is probably due to playing quarterback when I was young and still kind of having that mentality like, all right, you know, I feel like I'm a quarterback in my position. Uh, and just, you know, trying to see everything. 
I grew up playing quarterback. Uh, I grew up in a football family where my grandfather was Hall of Fame, South Carolina. My uncle's Hall of Fame in South Carolina. Uh, I've been introduced to football at a young age and, and knowing not just my position, but what everybody else's position is as well and how it affects me. Weren't you supposed to be a defensive back originally when you went to Clemson? I was. I was recruited very highly out of high school as a, as a safety defensive back. Got the state record in South Carolina. Um, just about every college recruited me as a defensive back, not a receiver. Uh, but I wanted to go somewhere where you know I had the opportunity to play both. And Clemson at the time didn't have the great greatest receivers, and they gave me that, that opportunity. So five Pro Bowls. Um, three times all pro statistics that are already Hall of Fame worthy potentially. Thank you. Year 11, what's left for you to do in football? What are your goals? You know, obviously a Super Bowl is everybody reasoning of playing the game, but you know, my goal is to, to pass down what I can to other players, the knowledge, uh, you know, certain skill sets that I have, um, you know, try to sharpen someone else. And for me it's, you know, giving back what I've gained and, and trying to help someone else get to uh, that goal of winning the championship or, or just being the best version of themselves on the football field and off the field. More with DeAndre Hopkins next week on Titans All Access. This week we talked football. Next week we talk about lots of things in his life that he's interested in. I think you'll enjoy that too next week on Titans All Access. Coming up later in this edition of the program, Coach Dave McGinnis takes us beneath the surface, powered by Microsoft, to take a look at Carolina quarterback Bryce Young. But up next, Josh Corey is back. We're in Brownsville, and we're going to Livingston's for some great food. Follow me through Tennessee on Titans All Access next. It's time for the decision of the week. Sponsored by Hughes and Coleman, the Titans organization made the decision in 2007 to become the presenting sponsor of the Mr. Football Awards. And it has been a great thing for all involved. The Mr. Football Awards honor the best high school football players in the state of Tennessee in each classification. The 2023 awards luncheon on December 5th will be held at Nissan Stadium with General Manager Rand Carthon handing out the awards and the players, their coaches, and their families shown a first-class time. For the Titans organization, sponsoring the Mr. Football Awards for the last 16 years is just one more way to serve our state while promoting the game of football and those who play it. You can watch the 2023 Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Awards Luncheon on Tuesday, December 5th at noon central on TennesseeTitans.com. And that's the decision of the week presented by Hughes and Coleman. This season on Titans All Access, I've invited you to follow me through Tennessee to some of the best places to eat that I can find. Some of them have been around forever and others are new, like Livingston's in downtown Brownsville, Tennessee. I invited Titan Senior Director of Marketing and Social Responsibility, Josh Corey, to go with me to get some great food in downtown Brownsville, and we had an outstanding trip to Livingston's. So now, follow me through Tennessee. So, Coach, I'm going to introduce you here. It's Jack Pettigrew, Glenda Pettigrew, and you know Josh Puckett. Haywood County. Haywood County. Haywood. We're the only Tom Cannon in the state. Yes. So we're the only Tom Cannon mascot in the state. We're pretty proud of that. And I'm having the Livingston's yeah. burger. With sweet potato fries. With sweet potato fries. So we've got pimento cheese, bacon. And that's candied bacon. Candied bacon. Pimento cheese is my favorite. It's got a little jalapeno in it. Good. I'm, I'm looking. Should I should I take a bite now? You should. Okay. <laughs> now while I'm taking this bite, you guys opened this place last year, and this had always been your dream, dating back to your dad. Is that right? Exactly. Tell he, the story. Well, I was raised here in Brownsville. He he had a pharmacy, and in those days they were called drugstores, but they all had uh, soda fountains. And I would come up here as a 10 year old and see the soda fountain. And the high school students would have to fix me a cherry coat or whatever. And uh, 
In the 60s, the three drugstores in Brownsville took out the soda. And I just always had wanted to bring it back. You know, it was just a fun era. And uh, this was the opportunity. And this was a furniture store after it was the post office, right? Correct. It closed down in uh, March of 21 from being the home furniture store. And we bought the building then. It took us about a year to renovate. And we opened in April of 22. And you kept the name? Kept the name. It was a cool name. It's a great legacy. Uh, they had a, a sign on the side of the building out here that we love. The name was across the front of the building. And honestly, we didn't want it to be Petty Brews forever. So we left the name the same so the next person wouldn't have to change. All right, so you can see what I've ordered as a shake. I watched it coming all the way down the, the hallway. All right, Dr. Jack, what are we having here? You're having the Muddy Hatchy River. That's chocolate on chocolate on chocolate. That's good. Everything <laughs> chocolate. And who de who designed that? Uh, Miss Linda did all the specialty milkshakes. Why did you come up with that one for certain? Well, he wanted to name something after the Hatchy River. Right. And um, so we decided to do a chocolate shake and just add lots of chocolate, whatever I could come up with that was chocolate to it. Are you getting a game plan? I'm getting. I a, saw you sizing that thing I'm a game face. Yeah. Is this a Hershey bar? The Titans are finally back home this weekend to host the Carolina Panthers. Coach Dave McGinnis is on deck to go beneath the surface, powered by Microsoft, to show us the Panthers rookie quarterback, Bryce Young. That's next. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio and Titans All Access. I'm joined by Coach Dave McGinnis, my partner on Titans Radio. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Had a great Thanksgiving. Hope everybody enjoyed the turkey and a nice nap afterwards because turkey will put you to sleep. That's right. In a good way. In a good way for sure. <laughs> the Titans are so thankful to finally be home. This week against the Carolina Panthers, Frank Reich is their coach. We certainly know him from his days with the Indianapolis Colts. His quarterback is Bryce Young. We certainly know him from his days at the University of Alabama. What do you like about Bryce Young? Good athlete, good athlete, and he's got he's got a he's got a nice arm. He's had issues down there right now because people are just putting a tsunami rush on him. But uh, the the guy's athletically talented, and plus he's a competitor and he's a winner. He understands what it takes to play back there. It's just going to take him a while in the National Football League, especially with the group that he's surrounded by right now. He can make all of the throws as we're going to get ready to see here. Well, let's go get ready to see it let's right go. now as we're going to go beneath the surface, powered by Microsoft. Here's Bryce Young. We're going to get motion across the formation to a switch release, and once we get that, he's getting ready to throw a, a corner route, and I want you to watch the arm and watch the launch platform. This is a two-man stack, so if you're playing man-to-man -man or zone back here, you've got to decide. Who's going to take the bottom part of the zone? Who's going to take the top part of the zone? Or who's going to take inside, outside? Because we're going to get a switch release here. All right, look how deep that ball is thrown. The quarterback is still standing up. That was a switch release, a really nice throw. But I want you to watch the quarterback. Quarterback is checking the coverage over here to this side. Once he's checked the coverage over here to this side, as he comes back right, stop it, Mike, right there. Look at the throw and look how deep and how far that was down the field. All right, let's go to the next play. This is a nine ball stack, okay? So what you've got now, you've got, it's, got a, it's a three tier stack in here. Now the defense has got to decide, oh, we're gonna play pure zone as this comes off. He's got to read the release of the nine ball stack from the snap. They're playing zone coverage right now. Stop it, Mike. Perfect, yeah, perfect. Now look at the cylinder. We'll see this from the end zone. Watch the cylinder collapse around him, but look how open red this corner route is. You got a three level route, you got a flat, a crosser, uh, and, and then you've got the deep corner. This guy's read all of that out off of the release of the nine ball stack. Let's watch from the end zone. This cylinder right here has collapsed around him, but he is still stepping up into the throw, reading out the three tier nine ball stack route and throwing to the exact perfect spot. 
This guy's got what it takes to be a starting quarterback in the National Football League. And that's just a little sample of what you're going to see Bryce Young. He's got the ability to spin the ball down the field. And that's why he was the first pick in the NFL. That's absolutely why. Great job, Coach Mack. No, great job, Mike Keith, running that. So much smoother. We'll see you at Nissan Stadium on Sunday. I think I'll be there. All right, more Titans All Access from the Bet MGM studio coming up after this. Congratulations to the 2023 Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Awards finalists for Division II. Classes Single A, Double A, Triple A, and Kicker of the Year. It's time now for our Seat Geek keys to knocking off the Carolina Panthers. More chunks, please. That's more chunk plays. The Titans had a 38-yard reverse to Chris Moore. Moore hauled in a 49-yard pass later in the game. And, of course, the flea flicker type touchdown pass to DeAndre Hopkins. That covered 43 yards. The Titans play much better on the offensive side of the ball when they have chunk plays. It's part of their offense that they need, and they need more of them against the Panthers. Second key, make young, he being Bryce, feel old. They've got to chase him around like Dallas did. Dallas sacked him seven times. He's been sacked 36 times this year. He has been harassed quite a bit more than even that. The Titans defense, which has not gotten to the quarterback enough in recent weeks, must continue the trend of making Bryce Young feel like he's running for his life at times. Make Young feel old. And how about on Thanksgiving weekend, a heaping helping of home cooking? Titans are 3-0 at Nissan Stadium. They have played complimentary football just like Mike Vrabel wants. More of that. More home cooking for the Titans as they get ready to take on the Panthers this Sunday. We'll remind you, Titans Panthers is on every Titans radio station. Coming up this Sunday at 11 a.m. Central with Titans Countdown. Kickoff set for 12.02 at Nissan Stadium. We hope you join us. Thanks for watching Titans All Access, and we'll see you next time.